Hi, and welcome to module two of the Competent Risk Manager course. Hopefully you did okay with module one. I've got some of the ideas that we need to start to put in place. In this module, we're gonna look at some of the key things that are gonna come up when you actually go off and do the course itself. And we're gonna introduce a couple of ideas that are not extensively covered within the course, but are important to you as you go forward. Firstly, this is what we're going to have a look at. We've got to think about the scanning steps. So think about where we are in the process at the moment. Your day one of your programme, blank sheet of paper. Where do you start? So the first place you start is the context of your programme. So in the first module, we talked about governance and all that kind of stuff. But here, what are your objectives? What is the context of those objectives? Are you reacting to... Um, some situation that's developed and the program has to get out there and fix it? Or are you creating situations by having very ambitious change objectives built into what you have to do? Do you have the skills in your team? Does the organization have the skills? Going back to the Peter M3 stuff that you did in module one. So understanding the context and the level of risk that your program faces and the level of risk that your program is creating. Okay, so the next step is scanning. All right, so where do we go? What do we look at? And, and within the module, we've given you a couple of acronyms uh, to work with, Fab Stories and PESL, some checklists of places to go and have a look. And once you've done that, you record all this stuff and bring it back together. In this scanning phase, we're not evaluating and analyzing because we're gonna do that separately in the next module. We're going to have a little look at some of the limiting factors that could cause you to miss things um, and where to stop. OK, right, let's move on. Firstly, let's think about this word VUCA. If you haven't come across it, it's a very popular word in the world of strategic uh, direction setting. And as you can see from the screen it stands for volatility uncertainty complexity ambiguity and that's because in the world we live in there is no predictability We're, i'm recording this in january 2020 12 months ago we had absolutely no idea there was a global pandemic on the way and for 12 months we've really not been knowing what we're going to do from one week to the next and looking into the future we haven't got a clue how it's going to plan out hopefully There'll be people still wanting to do risk courses. But what it means is the world is so complex. When we think about the way technology works, how we interact, the speed of communication, things can change so quickly. And as the risk manager in this model, or the person looking after risk, you've got to try and cope with that. Because basically anything could happen. There is no certainty about anything, possibly in capital projects, or programs where you're building big infrastructure, it's more certain than other areas. But in the tech world, it's, even, it's the most unstable it's ever been. And as the saying goes, it ain't gonna change anytime soon. So we need to be at least conscious of the VUCA in this and accept that there's a limit to how much certainty we can bring to a scenario. Okay, so you're about to start your scanning what is the main limiting factor? Now, don't take this personally, but from the, at this point in time, we'd say the major limiting factor to finding risks is yourself and your team. All right. So as you come into this, there's things that you know. You're in that role because you've got lots of experience. Your organization has trusted you to do the job. So you're coming into it confident that looking at this program, there'll be things that you know could go wrong from your previous experience. The second thing that you know are the things you don't know. So you're looking at this problem now thinking, well, yeah, I've seen all that before, but there's a twist in the objectives. We've never done it this fast. The scale's bigger. Um, the scope's been changed. The organization that I'm working in is more or less mature. So there are things that I know that I don't know. All right, so those things, the green things, they're likely to be the first things you pick up when you do your risk scanning. 
the amber things are the things that are likely to come up as you start to jot this stuff down. But then the ones that really cause the problem are the things that you don't know, you don't know. Now, I'd just like to um, take us back a few years when the um, Americans invaded Iraq uh, and Donald Rumsfeld after the invasion and in the years that followed very famously said that when they, had, when they um, invaded, there were things that they knew, there were the things they knew they didn't know and the things that had caused all the problems afterwards were the things they didn't know they didn't know. Now, the reality of it is your programme there are not many things that we don't know. It's just whether you're going to go and find them. All right. And just as a word, as the guy who wrote MSP, Managing Successful Programs, versions three and four in 07 and 2012, and looking at recent reports on, for example, causes of failure in major government programs, I can honestly tell you that the causes of failure that were highlighted in version one of MSP in 1999 are not particularly different to the ones that are being highlighted now in 2020. So the sources of risks and failure of programmes are pretty much the same. So why is it people are choosing not to look at those issues or look at those risks when they're scanning? Because the things you miss now are the ones that are going to kill you. They're the ones that are going to knock your programme over. So you have to be really thorough now. So what's going to stop you being thorough? It's most likely going to be biases. OK, these are the things that you, your team, your sponsor or senior responsible owner, whatever you want to call them, the people on the program board, those people, all of you have biases and it's those biases that are going to be limiting factors. Now, we're going to talk about biases in pretty much every one of these modules from now on. But here's a list of them that we've come up with. And just think about the consequences of some of these. Optimism bias is everywhere, right? You never think things are going to go wrong. Yeah. Where expectation or confirmation bias. So you may be picking up facts going, yeah, I told you that wouldn't happen. We don't have to worry about it. Take my advice. The planning fallacy. Why do we always fail so much on planning, right? What makes you think your program is going to deliver more effectively to a time scale than all those others that failed? Yeah. Availability bias, the availability of information. Now, if you look at these common causes of failure, they may not come up in your workshops and all that. But trust me, five minutes on Google and you'll find so many causes of failure that you haven't thought about. I really like this group thing because where we've done assurance reviews of programs, it is quite amazing how program boards and program teams can lock themselves down into one way of thinking because nobody's standing back and challenging it. All right. Group think could make so you could find a risk and the group say, oh, that's never going to happen. And it's discarded two years down the line. Your program's on its knees and said, I thought that in the first place. Framing factor. OK, this is one of those things where uh, we'll probably come back to later, but people place higher value on losses avoided than on the benefits. And that's why we tend to think about threats rather than opportunities. So it's a, one of those things within risk. We need to look at the good things as well. Now, anchoring and adjustment at this point, are we going to look? We see and we see things and go, oh, yeah, that's never been. It's unlikely to happen highly unlikely to happen and the first time you say that you'll stick with that yeah you'll be reluctant to change it as you go forward and the interestingly this other one confusing correlation with causation so that's basically mistaking uh, things happening as being caused rather than actually coincidence and effect um, and just actually very current at the moment as i'm speaking this we're, we're, we're in the winter of the COVID uh, pandemic. And back in September in the UK, there was a real uplift. You could really see the number of infections taking off as the schools went back. And so logically, as, not, as uh, somebody not that particularly well informed, I'm looking at going back to schools and universities have caused that. However, it turned, but then all the evidence is saying 
but they're not schools are not particularly infectious areas for spreading all right so what we saw was um, the slacking in, in earlier in the month the month before the numbers coming through from the slackening of controls it wasn't to do with the schools but you just looked at those numbers and you thought it's the schools so working out what is the cause and effect and are you looking at coincidences or are you looking at the right data all those things but these biases are so important in getting risk management right Coming back now to the Piper Alpha picture from module one, when you're doing your scanning, you're going to find hopefully lots and lots of stuff. It's probably all on post-it notes, research, all that kind of stuff in front of you. And it's only at the end of this that we want to record it. It's when we get to analysis, we have to decide, have we seen an impact? Have we seen an event? Have we seen a threat? Is the event the thing that triggers the event? Are we actually recording lots of things we don't want to happen? So they're more likely the impact and consequences or are really getting at the threat that we're facing on this. So scanning is absolutely crucial to getting this correct. Um, put aside your biases. Don't think about what you don't know. Think about all those black swan things that you can't think of. Go and look, for, look in other places, speak to other people. You've got lots of hints that you'll cover in the course. Um, and we hope you'll follow them. And remember, you've got to go and do it back to your own programme. And we've got the exercise and that's where the real value is. OK, well, that's enough of listening to me. Uh, time to go off and do the module. Remember to do the exercises. Enjoy Nightingale Hospital. Treat it with seriously, but with a sense of fun, because if you see it as a grind, you won't enjoy this. So I'll see you in the next module.